Here it goes. <coughs> it's a YouTube. Hey. Howdy, friends. Welcome to the Brohio Ranch. I'm the head rancher, Willie. <laughs> they call me Big Will. Big Willie. Speaking of Willie, you guys want to see my dick? <laughs> <laughs> No, we're all missing files. We don't care about this any longer. Puffy Nipple Gang, where is it? Oh, God damn it. What the fuck? Uh-oh, what happened? I took the fucking... I took the, uh... We love you very much, Mitchell Ray. Oh, okay. Hey guys, thanks so much for being here. There it is. Look at that. Fuck all. Fuck all y'alls. Fuck off. Hey yo, this is going to be a good episode, guys. Bring, Bring back, back the, the wig. wig. It's sitting right here on the table. It's dead. Yeah, I killed it. <laughs> I didn't get the shower before I came over here, or else I would put it on. Fucking I, put it on. Who cares? I smell like shit. Who fucking cares, dude? It just sits down here waiting for you to wear it. <laughs> not like I wear it around the house when you're not here. It gets itchy. It doesn't move. All right. You good? I'm Bueno. If you like to blow raspberries on your own belly, you've come to the right podcast. I'm one half of the Brohio podcast. I'm the delicious Nickalicious. Welcome to the Cream Spot, folks. <laughs> Welcome to the Cream Spot. Hey, everybody. I'm a Rob Dog. What's going on? Sorry for leaving you guys hanging last week. We had some important shit going on. Here's what happened. I died. I'm going to replace. I'm going to explain this to you guys nice and slowly. Rob and I got in a huge fight. <laughs> yes. Um, after that, we fought. We fist fought. I died because he used a knife. I cheated. Fortunately, he had enough Pikachu power. He revived me. We became friends again. We started over. We went all the way back to his house where we first met. Um, we hung out in his basement. His dad beat the shit out of him. <laughs> Last week, Kyle <laughs> quit the band. <laughs> But now we're back together. <laughs> Rob went on vacation to North Carolina. Yeah, I went to the Outer Banks for a week. I went to Northern Cali. Let me tell you something about California, folks. <laughs> Probably got a lot of California listeners in this in this uh, podcast world. You guys got a lot of weed. <laughs> a lot of weed, and it's fucking disgusting there. <laughs> Is it? It's gorgeous. It's perfect. Yeah. If you could just get rid of all the people, California would be <laughs> Valhalla. It would be the perfect landscape for everything but everywhere you turn there's hobos shitting on the sidewalk and fucking it's each trash. other so there's not anything worth w moving around for that we went yeah. to alcatraz went to pier walked all up and down there selling marijuanas on the fucking street i said are these injectables or what he said no these are f this is f these are joints these are marijuana cigarettes for ten dollars name was rodrigo <laughs> he gave us his card. He said, I got an Instagram. Go check me out. I'm like, all right. I went on Instagram. He had fucking 12 followers. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that's sad. Uh, that's sad. You know, this is going to be good weed. <laughs> did you make a, Did you make yourself number 13? Uh, yeah, I, no, I, don't, I, I don't think I did. I don't use my Instagram. My Instagram hasn't been touched in a, in a long, long time. But it was, it was a culture shock for sure. Okay. I will say this. There are some fucking beautiful people out in California. Mm -hmm. There are some sideshows as well. Sure. And one thing I saw that I, this is a little different than Ohio, so bear with me for a second. The women, um, <clears throat> they weren't wearing brawls. And they, were, they were very, and I was like, that is fucking awesome because I wasn't like, and I've said this before, I don't really lust after other people. I got a, mm -hmm. I got a main bitch I roll with. I fucked the shit out of her tonight if you want me to. <laughs> yeah, sure, dude. I want you to. Don't even care if she wants it or not. I'm putting <laughs> it on her. But I'm just, I'm happy that there's a movement that women can say, fuck 
you, I don't want to wear a bra. I just want to wear whatever I want. I want to be comfortable. Hell yeah. And I'm glad that movement is out there because if I don't, if I want to free ball it and not wear underwear, that's what I'll do. Sure. But then a woman, she wants to not wear a bra and there's this instant stigma. Hey, she's fucking nasty or she doesn't care or she's just doesn't have enough money for a bra <laughs> or she's got prosthetic nipples. Bras are expensive, dude. They are really expensive. <laughs> Especially if you've got big titties. And there's always this thing like people will look at them like, oh my God, she's not wearing a bra. But I think it, I love it. I think it's so <laughs> cool that people are just, you know, fucking coming just comfortable that it's time. Like, bug the fuck off. Keep hey, it man. moving. This is how I want it. This is how, this is how I want to dress. This is how I, I want to be. I could imagine wearing a bra all the time. No, I would let them things flop out. Even yeah. if I was milking and had big floppers, I'd still let them just be like, oh. what the fuck do you want? We'd both definitely have big mommy milkers. There's these, no, no way we would. my tatties. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want me to do with My tater tots. Them? These are my muffins. <laughs> But yeah, oh, it was shit. a it was a huge culture shock going out there. I met a lot of super cool people. We were coming off the pier, uh-huh. and I looked on my Google phone, and I'm still I wasn't really sure about like distances there. I know if something says it's three miles away, it's a fucking hour away. Yeah, yeah. there their traffic is atrocious. We were coming off the pier, and there was all those dudes on the bicycles with they got like two seaters on the back, mm-hmm. and they'll take you to your destination. They just ride a bike. It's like an Uber on a bike. Yeah, That's exactly what it is. And I said, "Hey, how far away is the Full House house?" He's like, <laughs> "Bro, listen to me for a second, okay? Hop on, dude. It's gonna be about a hundred dollars though, because it's like three miles away." And I'm thinking to myself, three miles on a bicycle that takes like fucking six minutes. Yeah. But he's like, "Bro, it's all uphill." It's a long fucking way, dude. There's not a lot of crosswalks. We're going to have to do some off-road funky shit. It's going to be $100. <laughs> and I looked at my buddy Roy. I said, Roy, I'm not doing it for a hundo. And we're just, we'll drive the car. But I did get a full house house. Took my Saw that, yeah. No Michelle Tanner. There wasn't a lot going on. Pretty anticlimactic, honestly. But yeah. uh, No theme music or anything? No. That's <laughs> a bummer. <laughs> we did not stay very long there, but. San Francisco is a pretty cool spot. Didn't get fucking railed out like I wanted to, so that was a little disappointing. <laughs> lots of cool people, lots of guys holding hands. <laughs> God bless them. There was two hairy guys just making out on the uh, waiting Fuck for yeah. the, for on when I was at the Alcatraz coming back, and I turned the corner. And I wasn't ready for it, and they were fucking hairy <laughs> ass dudes, man. Two just gorillas. It was like two patches of. Uh, Velcro, <laughs> they were just on each other, and you could hear it. It's not, it was like someone was beating the macaroni with a fist. <laughs> they were making out hardcore. I said, "Those guys are fucking good l- for them." They are fucking later on. And Love said, is a beautiful thing. And under my breath, I was like, "Hell yeah, boys!" <laughs> <laughs> under my breath when I walked by, but yeah, <laughs> they were going to town. I said, "Get it." It was just a different world. It was cool. It was a cool change of pace. I enjoyed myself, except oh, yeah. for all the bum shit on the sidewalk and fighting each other <laughs> over crack rocks. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. Different world, man. It is a different world. Let's hop into our new Patreon subscribers real quick. Hell yeah. First off, we have Paul Lucarati. Paul New Karate, but now he's Lucarati. <laughs> okay. Hey! <Hi-ya! laughs> Thank you, Paul, for your Patreon pledge. Juan Velasquez. Thank you very much, Juan. I already got this big. Never mind. That's what she oh, said. I'm going <laughs> to Jeremy Shoom. Jeremy the Shroom Shoom. Thank you, Jeremy Shoom, for your Patreon pledge. Uh, Pearl Loika. Garbil. Garbil? Gar- garbage. Garbage. Gar- Gab- Gab- Gabriel. Thank you, Pearl Garbage. We both have a uh, Garbil. It's Garbil. Gar- garbage pail. <laughs> we both have a bit of a cold or COVID. We're not sure, so you bear with us for this episode. Yeah, I'm, I'm just got allergies. I'm Patrick Sh- Sh- Shenanigan. Shenanigan. Thank you, Patrick <laughs> Shenanigan. Austin Fowler. Thank you very much, Austin. Gabby Jean. Thank you, Gabby Jean, for your... Patreon pledge. The backdoor burglar. That's what my dad calls me. <laughs> Derek Gentry, you are the winter soldier. Thank you, Derek Gentry. <laughs> and next we got Brian Michael Davis. Thank you very much, Brian. Uh, next up we have Angela Mastrolani. Master 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 Anus. Speaking of anus, Master a, Master a <laughs> Annie. Wow. I think some people just make up last names in order to scare us, try and show everyone that we mispronounce shit. Yeah. I don't think we ever do, though. No, we don't. We've Le- never mispronounced anything. <laughs> Leanne McCabe Hart, thank you very much. She's part of the Hart Foundation. Loud dog. <laughs> <laughs> Thanks, loud dog. Uh, Shannon Rochester, thank you very much. And last but not least... Alan 
Alan Lopez. Oh. Alan Lopez, thanks for the Patreon pledge. Oh, thank you, Alan. We're so thankful. And real quick, uh, tune in for the next episode where we will be doing the Bro-Io Battlefield of Love. Yeah, part four. so many of them, man. Beautiful. So I love it. Oh, my God. There's so many. I'm going to try to talk my wife into coming to do the next one with us. <laughs> I think I got her. I think I got her convinced. I got to write a text message real quick. I feel bad. Oh, shit. She's in here. Well, in the meantime, YouTube, what's going on? How's everybody doing? Let me see your dicks. <sighs> um, all right. Rob's a little off focus, and that's just me, dog. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> that's just because I haven't showered today, so I'm a little, uh, it's just my cloud of dirt, like, what's his name, Linus, or Ly yeah. on fuck, <laughs> anus. <laughs> anus. Ugh. Has Listen anybody complimented my shirt yet? Nope. Because this is an OG shirt. It is. What up, my dude? What's up, Daddy? Mm. Daddy Seth. All right. This party started. Oh, yeah. Okay, I had to stop real quick. We're back now. Okay. We got an article for you this week, not a battlefield of love because we're doing an entire episode, so we're back. The article's got a good one this week. Sweet. It's entitled, Man Ejaculates from Anus Urinates Feces for Two Years Before Seeking Help. Hell yeah. Doctors have published a case study detailing a man who started ejaculating from his rectum after oh. a previous medical procedure called, caused complications. Now I got some pipes crossed. And the thing is about when you're coming out of your butt, you don't know if you're coming or going, <laughs> Rob Dog. The man aged... <laughs> Man, age 33, turned up for medical care after experiencing pain in one of his testicles. Not both of his testicles, only one of his testicles. Oh, man. For the, from the previous five days, he also said he'd been passing a substantial amount of urine and sperm from his rectum or his butthole over the previous two years. Wow. Holy fucking shit. Why wait shit. so long? That must have been fun. That was probably the <laughs> funnest two years of his entire life. What if he was still pissing out of his dick, though? Uh, well, we're going to find out. Okay. He also said he'd been experiencing a problem known as pneumaturia, pneumaturia, in there which people pass gas in their urine and Fecaluria, I think that's shit, in yeah. which people pass bowel matter through their urine. Fecal, ur fecal urea. Tell you what, pal, first time I shit out of my dick, I'm going <laughs> straight to the motherfucking doctor. Oh, man. Not stopping for $200, not passing go. I'm walking straight no. in that bitch. They say, excuse me, delicious, Nickalicious. Do you have an appointment? And I'll look over and I say, charge up! <laughs> I got shit coming out of my dick. Yeah, especially because I poop bigger than what my dick is. So. Let me roll on in here. <laughs> I talk, but you know that's easy for you. I got a big old meaty dick flap. <laughs> that's right. Some of you guys wrote emails and made fun of my size of my dick hole. <laughs> said, "Oh boy, you got a big old dick hole. What a fucking weirdo." And I said, "It's gonna come in. It's gonna come into play one day, and it's gonna help me." Here I am, shitting dick, sitting ponderosa out of my dick. You guys have ponderosa miss, where you're at? I miss ponderosa. God, that was good. Wasn't Fuck yeah, it, it was. It was always great, Ponderosa. It was a steakhouse and a salad bar. So what they would do, you would eat the salad bar for a solid 40 minutes because they never brought your food out on time. <laughs> worst, worst like hostessing or waitressing yes. ever. And you would gorge yourself, and you're like, oh, my <laughs> God, I can't eat anymore. And about that time, when they walk out, like, your sirloin's ready. Here's your sirloin. And they would hand you a sirloin and a baked potato on top of the fucking salad, the the buffet you've been eating for. Pretty much hour. what it was, yeah. It was fantastic. It's great. Doctors found that the man's vital signs were normal, and they decided to carry out further tests to see what was going on. A CT, or kitty cat scan, of his pelvis revealed evidence of a gas-filled structure in the man's prostate uh -oh. that appeared to be connected to the rectum or the butthole. <laughs> that is known as fistula, because that's where I like to put my fist <laughs> is right in my fucking next to my prostate. An <laughs> abnormal connection between the two body parts. Okay, so there's a little secret shortcut in there. Uh. In an attempt to work out of the cause, uh, work out the cause, doctors considered inflammatory bowel disease and tuberculosis. Damn TB! <laughs> Holy <laughs> shit! Yeah, I'm gonna die on a farm in Kentucky. You're fucking hit him with that 1920s <laughs> <laughs> diagnosis. Yeah, we think you either got uh, fucking scarlet fever or tuberculosis. <laughs> We're not sure, but either way, you're not gonna live very long in the Oregon <laughs> Trail, my friend. They also asked the patient if he had any abdominal surgeries or experienced penetration or trauma to the rectum. <laughs> Guilty. That might have contributed to the symptoms. 
He said he had not. A yeah, likely story. After investigating more, the doctors found the man had been in a three-week coma oh, around God. two years prior to drug intoxication. Oh, he definitely shoved something up his ass. During this time, the man had a Foley or urinary catheter inserted a tube that drains the bladder of urine, and the doctor said that it appeared to have caused significant trauma, which led to the man's current condition. Doctors successfully performed surgery to block the connection between the man's prostate and rectum, so he no longer was pissing shit and shit and piss, and he recovered. The doctors at the University of Texas described the case as unique and curious, not unique like that nasty-ass makeup you bitches wear, <laughs> and published the peer-reviewed report and the Curious Medical Journal in August this year. They concluded that while Foley, Mick Foley, Mrs. Foley, Mrs. Baby, Foley boy, baby Boy, catheters are important in healthcare, it is essential to, to stay weary of its complications. They added this case not only highlights a rare complication of catheter use, but also emphasizes the importance of provider mindfulness when utilizing seemingly benign therapies such as Foley's catheters. <laughs> Connections between the rectum and the urine tube are not unheard of, though. They are uncommon, occurring in only 0.5 people per 100,000 per year, according to the study. Huh. Most cases in uh, adults are acquired in some way, such as through surgery or medical condition. Let's see here. The doctors noted that the passage of sperm through the rectum is so rare. Wow. <laughs> you got cum in your butt, boy. <laughs> that there are few established cases. Previous occurrences involved connections between the rectum and the ejaculatory duct due to surgery for conditions like inflammatory bowel disease or <sighs> malignancy. So does, <laughs> does cum help your <laughs> irritable bowel? I farted in a cum, Doc. <laughs> there I was jerking off. I shit all over myself. <laughs> Man. I did none of the poop come out of my butt. Two years, though, man. That's a long time to wait on something like that. Maybe you liked it. <laughs> it felt good. Can you imagine fucking jacking off and you you're shit like, and you come. You're like fucking three minutes into a Jenna Jameson video and you <laughs> and a nugget pops out of your wiener. It farts. Right as you come and you're just, your wiener goes. <laughs> little baby wiener fart. Yeah. Does your wiener ever fart? No, I wish it had. I just kind of want to experience that a little bit. You know, this sounds painful, but this sounds like a lot of fun as well. You yeah. could really play some funny tricks on people. Oh, you could, definitely. You could go to the club and be like, any hot boy. Get him to come back to you, with yeah. you, or whatever. And then he says, I want you to piss on me. And you <laughs> say, I'll do one better for you. I'm going to shit on you with my dick. I'm going to... Women pee out of their butts, so it's not completely unnormal for something like this to happen. No, not at all, yeah. Totally Every normal. single time my wife goes to the bathroom she sits down yep out of her butt it comes yep and i don't ask i just let the camera roll and i watch it when she's done i don't need <laughs> and i can see it come out <laughs> see it. Like she's fart. got a filing cabinet of <laughs> got a hairy fart <laughs> big greasy fart speaking of greasy farts this is probably the episode that's going to get us banned from the internet we've had a couple of those <coughs> i appreciate you guys sticking with us through the years much like kenny rogers said Ooh, the years. that's all he really said <laughs> okay that was a song by the old gambler himself and you know no when to hold him no when to fold him motherfucking kenny rogers anyways we're talking about dr martin luther king no not dr seuss we're talking about dr martin luther king and i would like to preface this episode by we are not diminishing anything that the Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King accomplished in his lifetime. He fought for something that needed to be fought for. So my for sure. official stance on Dr. Martin Luther King, thank you for standing up for the equality and the civil rights of people that didn't have it, that fucking deserved it. On the flip side, sometimes they don't tell you the entire story about certain people. A lot of people do a lot of good things, including Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King. All of the accomplishments that he had in his life, all of the headway he made for racial equality in this country, while we still don't have complete racial equality, in my opinion, he did make headroom. And he and his family should be proud of his... He shouldn't be proud because he's fucking dead. But they should be proud of his legacy and everything he accomplished. And people of color should reflect upon Martin Luther King in a positive light. What we're talking about in this episode goes a little deeper than that. There's going to be a dozier, uh, a dossier. I'm sorry, not a dozier. Well, a dozier is a fucking dog, isn't it? I don't know. We're talking about a dossier. 
which in terms of a dossier, <laughs> Dozier. a bulldozer, <laughs> got a dozer, we're talking about a dozer, <laughs> dossier, sometimes a dossier is just a, a conglomerate <laughs> of information that's compiled for investigation. Not necessarily, necessarily all true, but if you got the keys to the dozer, let's fire it up for this goddamn episode. Right? Old dozers. And I did say, you know, all of us should be proud for, for the accomplishments of Martin Luther King. Of White course. people, brown people, black people, purple people, orange people, we should all be proud of Martin Luther King. But in this episode, we're going to talk about some possibly fucked up shit that Martin Luther King did. Okay. So let's take it and run with it. And I want to. I don't. I can't overstate this. We're not diminishing the accomplishments of the man, the legend, the heroism that he showed during a time when he could have tucked his tail and ran home. He continued to fight, and by fight, I mean he was a peaceful man with a peaceful vision. Yeah, he fought for the rights of the you know people that he feel like should have been getting them that didn't. Fuck yeah. So this is going to be uh, a different tone to this episode kind of weird because I told you I'm sick so if I have to suck on my boogers a couple times <laughs> in this episode you guys are just going to have to deal with it okay I'll do it for you if you want <laughs> <laughs> fire up the dozier <laughs> um, and with today's culture and Rob and I don't talk a lot about cancel culture because it is what it is you know we can't stop it nah. how the fuck have we not been canceled yet yeah, I think we're pretty out front with what we <laughs> We are what we are, and that's who you are, it's what you're going to get. Yeah. And in terms of cancel culture, everything gets canceled, but only the shit gets canceled that the media deems needs to be canceled, okay? So there's people that do shit that's fucked up that don't have to answer for the shit that they've done wrong. And I'm not going to cite any fucking examples because I don't need to put myself in any more hot water than we're already going to be in after this episode. <laughs> but celebrities interject their opinion in their noses in places that don't that they, that they don't they don't know the struggle, man. I I've gone to the supermarket, wrote a check, and said I pray to fucking God they don't cash this motherfucker until <laughs> Friday because it's going to fuck me up. How, why should someone that's never, ever been through the struggle like that have to tell me, like, this is what you should do and why you should do it? No, go fuck yourself. <laughs> you don't have anything to do with anything I got going on because you don't know what, I'm, what I got going on. So for LeBron James to say this is what needs to happen in America, no. You don't know what needs to happen to America because you live in fucking Never Never Land. You don't yeah, know. He's never really had the adult struggle. But the people here... In middle America, in the urban cities that are going through the shit, maybe you should ask them, see what help they need to fucking make the world a better place. I don't know. I, I know the, the opinion, the answer doesn't need to come from someone that is not going through the struggle or doesn't know what the struggle is like, which I think LeBron might have been poor at some point in his life. I think maybe his mom was. Nonetheless, when up. if any of you are listening, look up Google... Uh, LeBron James' feet, bare feet. <laughs> oh, don't do it, please. I want you to look at pictures of his bare feet. Ugh. That will tell you everything you need to know about his feet. It's bad. Yeah, look like gnarled. Yeah, I don't even. Look them at are still, them are like on the street San Francisco feet. Like cowhide. <laughs> Pretty terrifying. <laughs> like a pig's hoof. Yeah. So I, um, we're going to skip directly to the death of Dr. Martin Luther King. Okay. And I, I think that's good for us because a lot of times we can get caught up on things telling a story that will lead up to the climax. So we're going to skip most of the things that he has accomplished. We all know what Dr. Martin Luther King stood for. Mm -hmm. We just talked about it. Yep. We all know the things that he marched for, that he protested for, peacefully interjected his opinion in a good way um, to show the world that we needed to change, that we needed love, that we needed to love one another. Okay. So he did a lot of peaceful things, but then he fucking died. Because someone shot him in the head, yep. in the jaw, to be more specific. Yeah. You know how Americans hate people that are, that preach do it uh, for <clears throat> love and equality through peace. And we think we know who did it, but we don't. And that's what we're going to talk about. So we're going to talk about the conspiracies are, uh, surrounding the death of Dr. Martin Luther King. But then we're going to go a little deeper into some secret FBI files that just got opened up in the past couple of years that you probably don't know about. 
And there's some wild shit, man. Wild, wild shit. I'm going to start recording on the backup recorder, too. <laughs> yeah, please do that, yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Just after 6 p.m. on April 4th, 1968, shots rang out in Memphis, Tennessee. On the second story of the now infamous Lorraine Motel, a bullet entered Martin Luther King's jaw, severing his spine Oof. and eventually lodging in his shoulder. The famed civil rights leader was on his way to a dinner when the fatal shot was fired. He was in town to support a sanitation worker strike. He was pronounced dead after his arrival at Memphis uh, at a Memphis hospital. If we detailed everything that Dr. King fought for, that he stood for, that uh, all the positives in his life that he accomplished, we could we could speak hours. We could make a multi-part episode. But more, 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 more of a conspiracy-driven podcast, so that's mostly what we're going to be speaking to. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. worked hard to bring greater equality to America and ensure civil rights for all people, regardless of race, creed, color, language, it didn't matter. Notably, he brought publicity to major civil rights activities, emphasizing the importance of nonviolent protest. Wait, did you say creed? Yeah. When you're <laughs> with me. You can just get past that. I pee poop out of my dick. Oh, I bro. Hi. Oh. <laughs> yeah. If any of you pee out of your dick, <laughs> if shit comes out, send us an email. <laughs> I think a lot of people pee out of their dicks. Not me. <laughs> I've never told you guys how I pee. I'm not going to start today either. <laughs> Sitting down? Yeah. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> you just told us. All right. <laughs> My secret's up. So I do. You know, I pinch the tip. I close the valve. Close it. Mm -hmm. I pee mm -hmm. until my um, piss shoot, my wiener, <laughs> gets wider than my fist because it fills yeah. up with piss and it expands sideways. Yeah. Makes it look real, like a real big looking dick. Like chipmunk cheeks. <laughs> yes. And then I let it go. It just <laughs> sprays piss all over the place. <laughs> like my, a kinked up water hose. My bathroom <laughs> always stinks. <laughs> My wife said, oh, wow, it smells like piss in here. <laughs> well, you should say that. I was chipmunking my dick. <laughs> yeah, I saw you pee out of your butt. <laughs> you know what I can do? <laughs> I got to have a little drink real quick. <laughs> have at it, man. Mm -hmm. <coughs> oh, God, we're so, a mess. One of Dr. Martin Luther King's heaviest accomplishments mm -hmm. uh, would have been in Montgomery, Alabama in 1955. He led a boycott against city buses that refused to let blacks sit in the front seats. This stemmed from the incident where Rosa Parks refused to give up her seat on a bus. The protest gained followers rapidly, and it led to a citywide boycott of the bus system until the rules were changed. That's right. That. Peaceful protest sit-ins. Got it. The rules were changed because they wouldn't let blacks sit at the front of the bus. Go fuck yourself, Montgomery, Alabama. <laughs> it's changed since then, but it took a group of people that had a vision and a destination they knew what they wanted and knew where they're going and did it the right way, and they were able to accomplish a beautiful thing. Fucking white people. Just like this morning, I'm on my way to work. They go, I'm going to get up on the highway. They said, oh, I'm sorry, everybody. There's Patriot. What do they call it? Uh, let me look at it because I was looking to see if it was trending on Twitter. Um, I, gotta, I, I don't want to get this wrong. It's the Patriot Shutdown. Yep, Patriot Shutdown. I said okay. on the radio this morning, I said, be careful on your commute to work this morning because they're doing the Patriot shutdown. Hmm. All the truckers are protesting the van the mandatory vaccination mandate, uh. which doesn't fucking exist. Nothing's mandated yet. No, no. one's making you truckers get vaccinated. <laughs> so what the fuck are you doing? Uh, there was, and I, I, I think said, everybody oh, automatically said, knows I truckers said, aren't going to be vaccinated. Yeah. <laughs> I said, if I'm late to work because someone's <laughs> blocking the highway over some dumb shit like this, I will run right <laughs> through a fat ass trucker. I will destroy his little donut hemorrhoid pad that he sits on <laughs> in his truck. So I get on the highway, and there's a. I see two trucks, two like <laughs> rusted out Ford trucks on the side <laughs> on the side of the highway, and they had a flag, and the one was a Trump flag. Yeah, go figure. <laughs> and the other one said, "Biden, eat my ass." <laughs> what the fuck? <laughs> creative, creative and strong. I like it. But um, there were supposed to be hundreds of protesters. <laughs> there's two. And there's two of them. One dude looked like he weighed about mm, seven, maybe 800 pounds. The other one looked like he weighed about 47 pounds soaking wet. <laughs> so they probably had some really hot sex after that. Oh, yeah. The one that wanted his ass eaten, so I'm sure they did. But the whole way to work, just tr troopers, sheriffs, cops, 
I mean, pr- I probably saw, I drive an hour to work. I probably saw a hundred police cruisers between wow. here and Cincinnati. It was, it, it was, it was a lot of fun, but I only saw two of those little eat my ass Biden guys <laughs> go for, you know, you do your thing. I guess sitting on the side of the highway is a peaceful protest. So, so good on them for that. But I guess the, if they would have shut down the highway, I would have told them to go fuck themselves. <laughs> but I don't care. I don't care what you do. No. Like, not my concern. Just like, don't inconvenience me, you know? Yeah. Shut down a road I don't use. <laughs> I would have laughed at that. Had you shut down a road that I don't use, I would like, ha, <laughs> ha. I wouldn't have cared. But they were, like shut down a road like to the police sh- station. <laughs> yeah, shut down I-75, man. I'm like, get, get a fucking job, you know? Like, yeah, I'm going to be late. That's why I, sh- I should have rolled up, rolled my window down, like, don't you motherfuckers have jobs? That's what they always say. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> don't these people have jobs? Even though King and his followers were sent to jail, the boycott did succeed, and the unfair racist law allowing segregation aboard the buses was changed. History repeats this as the boycott that put King on the map. He emerged as a leader in the civil rights movement while cementing his dedication to change via nonviolent methods. Yeah. Okay. That's one of his biggest accomplishments. I didn't want this episode to be overshadowed by the alleged bad stuff. Yeah. So I just want to, the man stood for equality and peacefulness, love, mostly. I hope I hope some of the stuff I'm going to read you is not really true, but it's documented in government files. Yeah. Could it have been a fucking one of those uh, jobs where they try and make somebody look bad? Yeah, dis- what's it called? Uh, discredit? Dis- it's called discrediting, but there's another another oh, yeah. name for what they use to... I know that's the word I was trying to think of. I can't remember. Uh, a smear campaign. Yeah, a smear campaign. Yeah. Yeah. Put a bit of smear campaign. Just like that thing I get at the doctor every year. Pap smear. <laughs> yep. Where I put my butt up against the. F- <laughs> you get on all fours and spread your butt. Yeah, before he comes in, I leave him a big old fruit stripe on the, <laughs> on the mat. I drag my. Yeah. Like I got worms. Like I'm an old dog. <laughs> the paper covering on the bench. Yeah. So for a lot of years, though, for uh, the entire time Dr. Martin Luther King was doing his peaceful protests. The government, especially the FBI, J. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover, who was the head of the FBI at the mm-hmm. time in the 1960s, and that guy operated without any fucking rules or jurisdictions. He was an F. He was the leader of the FBI, but the guy didn't practice just full law. He had no, um, he had no limits and boundaries to what he could do and enforce in terms of who he could search. What he could do, he operated without rules. So he was kind of a shithead. I think he was, uh, you know, wanted to be a crime fighter, but at the end of the day, he did a lot of shithead stuff because he could do whatever the fuck he wanted. Yeah, unchecked power is not good. Uh, not a good That's thing. exactly what he was doing, too. Everyone was afraid of him. They, everyone was afraid of the FBI. We're not, we're not really that afraid of the FBI. We are a little bit, but I always worry about them watching me and shit. <clears throat> They'd have to look at my Google searches and they're like, Who's this guy? <laughs> oh, him again. He's fine. What's, what's he about? He's just a fatty. <laughs> so for all this time, not only did he have the government on his back, the FBI trying to watch him, his every step, every move, trying to discredit everything that he was claiming, but he also had multiple other organizations or radical groups, terrorist groups, uh, racial groups that wanted harm against him. He had the Ku Klux Klan that had numerous bomb threats on trains planes and automobiles that he was on there was all every place he went there was someone threatening his life his family's life his home was attacked he was attacked oftentimes he bled for his cause he bled for the things he believed in because that's what he believed was peaceful protest and just this next story 10 years prior to him dying um, so he died in 1968, I believe, in ni- uh, September 20th of 1958. Uh, Martin Luther King Jr. was signing copies of his book the sh- in, the, in the shoe section in a department store because that's the only place in the building they would allow him to sign his books Jeez. was in the shoe department of this uh, bookstore or this department store in Harlem, New York. The event had gone... Sk- very smoothly until a well-dressed woman jumped the line and after confirming that the author of the books and the person signing the books was indeed dr martin luther king she sunk a letter a letter opening blade several inches into his sternum 
Mm. A security guard and a newspaper reporter managed to catch the culprit before she could flee, and the crowd quickly devolved into panic. Dr. Martin Luther King did not show any panic at the time. He was quoted as saying, that's all right. Everything's going to be all right. He didn't panic. What a he sweet man. He told everybody around him. He said, I'm going to be fine. Don't worry about me. Little did he know that the fucking letter, the letter opener was so close to his aorta. The doctor that mm. removed it said, we got to take out two of your ribs in order to take this thing out without oh, killing you. Oh, gosh. So they had to take out two of Dr. King's ribs to successfully remove the letter opener that was shoved into his sternum. Not only did they have to Ugh. take out the two ribs to remove the letter opener, but the doctor also said, Dr. King, if you would have sneezed, this would have hit your aorta. You would have bled out in 10 seconds. You would have fucking died instantly. So from, from that point on, he got a letter from a high schooler that said, Dr. King, thank you for everything that you've done. Thank you for your cause. I'm so glad you didn't sneeze. And then all of his speeches, if you ever listen to a Dr. King speech and you hear him say, I'm so glad I didn't sneeze, it's because he's talking about this incident mm-hmm. right here. Okay. When he got a letter opener shoved into his chest. Yeah, I didn't even know about someone this. Someone tried to fucking kill him. So if, when he was assassinated, that was not the first assassination attempt yeah. against him. Every, nearly every day, he had to answer to death threats. How many times he was pulled off of a plane because of a bomb threat, we'll never know. How many times he was pulled off of a train because of a bomb threat, we'll never know. But somebody had a thumb on him and knew where he was at at any given second on any given day. There was no question about that. And they, uh, they waited for him to go places, and they threatened violence. Oh, hold on a second. <clears throat> Hello, YouTube. Uh oh. Alright. You alright? And they threaten violence. 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 (laughs) Right. (laughs) You sound like you're so happy about violence. Mm -hmm. Violence. Hi, kids. Do you like violence? (laughs) You want to see me stick nine inch nails to reach one of my eyelids? Copy me and get fucked up. I still remember the first time I ever heard that song. I don't know how I remember the first time, but I still remember it. I was spending the night at my aunt and uncle's house, and I was watching it. Uh, I wanted to make sure to watch it, the rerun of TRL that day, because it was on there, and everybody yeah. had been talking about that fucking song. It's a good song. It was really good. Holy shit. In case you didn't know. And Marshall Mathers LP, though, was the shit. It was. <laughs> <clears throat> God, I know I got COVID. I know. <laughs> Don't tell me that. I flew. I was on a plane. I can't taste my ass. <laughs> I farted and it smelled good. Oh, there you go. Sweet gold dust shirt, Nick. <laughs> Thanks. <laughs> Sorry, it's child care, babysitting problems, and trying to figure no, out. No, man, do what you got to do. Sorry, no, man. <laughs> I had that same problem last week, remember? <laughs> the week yeah, before. I kept getting calls about the beating my kids over the phone. No one needs beat. You just got to figure out how to get one of them to school tomorrow. Oh. Okay. All right. We got to stop there for a second again. That's my apologies. I've got a lot going on in my life right now that <laughs> requires my direct attention. Did your trash cans get taken again? No, my trash cans did not get repossessed. <laughs> they still out there. All right, good deal. I do got a funny story for you, though. Just we, we are at a quick breezeway point here. Yeah. While you were gone, um, I had an incident, a poop incident. Uh-huh. And I swear to God, I, sometimes my stories sound far-fetched. Yeah. I have never embellished or made up a story on this. Yeah. I mean, when I do make up a story, I tell you guys. Right, right, right. One million percent 
true story I'm about to tell you. We went to the Vandalia Oktoberfest. I think it was last weekend. Mm-hmm. Um, I don't remember. Yeah, it was you know eight days ago, whatever. <clears throat> Vandalia Oktoberfest. The food, cabbage rolls, pork chop sandwiches, sauerkraut, German potato salad, bratwurst, beer. I had one of everything. A pretzel, I'll a cream puff. Come. Mother of God, I ate so much goddamn food. Mm-hmm. But if you pre-order your tickets, you got a free stein with a free beer fill that was able to hold two and a half bottles of beer. Wow. The nice. stein did. Oh, yeah. So I got my beer fill. I got some fucking brown-ass dunkel. Mm-hmm. Good ass shit. Hell dude. yeah, Dunkel's really good. I ate all that food. I went back and I got two more steins full of beer. <laughs> You're fucking living your life, man. When I left, I was fucking hammered, man. <laughs> I was drunk. And she said, "You mean drop you off at home because we had a uh, a really good friend of ours, her grandma passed away. Oh, which God rest her soul, amazing woman, best macaroni and cheese I've ever had in my motherfucking life. God rest her soul. We wanted to go out there and visit with our friend." Mm-hmm. I said, Stacy, sweetheart, I'm drunk. I'm going to get us embarrassed. Let's go. Take me anyway. So we get out there going through Kettering, which you can't go fast anywhere in Kettering, but Not they got a all. really nice liquor store out there called Arrow Wine Spirits. Yes. Yeah. Yep. I said, take me there. I need more Dunkel. She said, Nick, no. I said, take me there. She said, okay. We go to uh, we go to Arrow Wine Spirits. I walk inside. I'm immediately hit with the most fucking disgusting shit cramps ever. Oh no! Well, I didn't know they were shit cramps. So they have a walk-in cigar humidor. Mm-hmm. I walk in there. I'm the only one in there. I let this thing rip, dude, from my belly button all the way to small on my back. Just <laughs> I fart, man. I cannot overstate how badly this fart smelled in this cigar humidor it's like farting in a hot shower it just climbs the walls and hangs there like a badass funk it stunk so bad that i started to gag myself i said i gotta get the fuck out of here so i i storm out of the humidor room and as soon as you leave the humidor there's a little there's a little uh customer service desk on the right and the guy said hey man did you find everything you needed i said i i nothing i really wanted I was looking for some rum dip cigars, but I'll, I'll come back. He said, well, come on back in here. I'll show you where it's at. And he pops up and starts to fucking run the cigar humidor. And I wanted to say, hold up, motherfucker. I just took a shit in there, and it <laughs> smells really bad. I had to get out. But he was not hearing it. Yeah. So I walked in with him, and I knew it was going to be bad. He said, over here on this wall, over ah! <laughs> <laughs> he fucking coughed a hairball. <laughs> He burp coughed. He said, over here on this wall. <laughs> he said, whoa. <laughs> whoa. <laughs> Fucking Rick Flair. And I said, hold on a second. Well, hold on a second. Is that the cigars? <laughs> he said, this is the best part. He said, he said, man, I am sorry. And the, the humidifiers, the dehumidifiers, whatever they have in there. Mm-hmm. He said, when they get filled full of water, they start to smell a little funky. Let me empty these out real quick. He pulled the little fucking tank open to empty the water. <laughs> it's nothing. In there was nothing in there. They were both bone dry. He opened up the first one. Oh, no, it's not that one. And he popped over the other one. He opened up that one. He's like, these are both bone dry. Put his hands on his hip. And he's like, yeah, that's funky, man. I said, yeah, I don't know. It must have been a... I started looking around, like looking for dog shit or something. I don't know what I was looking for. But he said, yeah, right over here in the... Ah! <laughs> Woo! He was injured, man. <laughs> yeah, and I said to myself, ah, just give me whatever you got, this rum dip. And I got my hands up on my waist, and I'm just staring, trying not to cry and shit. Give me whichever one's making that smell. <laughs> Get the fuck out of here, man. I'll, I want to suck that into my lungs. So um, my wife had to go. She dropped me off, and she went to Starbucks. Mm-hmm. And <laughs> I'm waiting out front holding a six-pack of Dunkel and some cigars waiting for her to get back. And my butt just starts to itch really bad. So <laughs> I fucking itch it because I'm drunk, drunk as shit. And I sit down in the car, and she's like, how was it? Oh, my God. I'm like, what? What? She said, you fucking stink. And I said, no, it's these cigars. And I held the cigar up, and I let her smell it. She's like, oh, my God, it is the cigars. So I'm thinking, I'm good. I'm in the clear. We roll on over to Kelsey's house. I walk in the bat. I walk in the house, and... I'm like, sweetheart, I'm so sorry. She, her grandma passed away. Mm-hmm. It felt terribly. I said, sweetheart, I'm sorry. You doing okay? I gave her a big bear hug. Someone my size 
these women, they want a bear hug from me when they're mm-hmm. sad. So that's what I gave her. And uh, she hugged me, and then I said, is it okay if I use your bathroom? <laughs> she didn't expect anything different from me. So she's like, yeah, you know where it's at. So I go in the bathroom. I sit down. I know I got to poop. I pull my underwear down. <laughs> I had fucking shit all in my underwear. I poop water water poop all in my underwear. I had shit all over myself, and I didn't even know that I would shit myself. So I sat in my own car, and I smashed it up inside my body. <laughs> all of them smashed over your butt cheeks. And, and I started panicking. If I was at your house, I would have had some doo-doo wipes. I could have yeah. cleaned myself up. Yeah. But all they had were them fucking little baby uh, boogie wipes. Not even, <laughs> oh, yes. the, not even the ones for your butt. They're the ones for blowing your yeah. nose, and that's all they had were boogie wipes. So I had to take a boogie wipe bath in the bathroom. I'm fucking drying my taint off and get shit off my dick with these boogie wipes. And I said, motherfucker. <laughs> And I didn't want to flush uh, my underwear down the um, down the drain, clog your <laughs> shit up. So I just kind of like put them in my hand without touching the poop, and I walked out front. And then when I walked out front, her husband Ron was out there. Which thank you for your service, Ron. He was in the Salem Witch Trials episode with us. Oh yeah, super nice. funny guy. And then uh, Kelsey's sister's husband Jake, he was out there too. He's got a fucking Travis Tritt 1987 mullet. Beautiful. The nicest one. So you can imagine what he's like. Yeah. He said, and Jake's like, hey man, what are you doing? And I just shook my head and they're like, what? You shit your pants? <laughs> like I didn't even, <laughs> no one knew what I had. They just assumed that I shit my pants. And me being me, I'm a little drunk. I just hold up my underwear, a big <laughs> wet grease spot all the way down the ass of them. They're, they're like gray underwear. So the, yeah. the shit yeah. stain was prevalent. Yeah. And they both just stared and then Jake's like, Mine always look like that when I take them <laughs> off. <laughs> I said, hell yeah, buddy. And, uh, so I threw them in the trunk of my car. And <laughs> God <laughs> damn it. How did you do that? <laughs> and I just uh, kind of forgot about it. And they're them. still in there right now. And then my wife drove my car a couple days later, and she's like, I went to go put groceries in the trunk of your car. <laughs> your shitty fucking underwear is still back there. <laughs> I said, it's my fucking car, my <laughs> rules, you know. If I want to put shitty drawers in uh, the in the bag, that's what I'm gonna do. So oh God, so funny. That's what I uh, I came out on the <laughs> other end, pretty scathed, still alive, still doing what I need to do. But unfortunately, I you did. shitty fucking underwear. <laughs> I was putting groceries in your trunk, and I couldn't help but notice. <laughs> Oh shit! And I was like, "No, those are a different pair. <laughs> those are not the original poopies. Those are different poopies. That was from earlier. <laughs> those are not the boogie white poopies." <laughs> so if you're asking yourself if it can be done, if I shit myself and all I have on hand are these little boogie wipes, <laughs> why oh, yes, man. it can be done. Well, there's a will, there's a way, man. Fortunately, it can be done. <laughs> it can. Oh, man. All right. So w- what we are learning about MLK is there was a buildup to his assassination. There mm-hmm. were attempts prior. People wanted him dead. I forgot what we were even talking about. People shit in his underwear, too, <laughs> man. He would fall asleep, and the FBI would sneak into his hotel room while he was sleeping, and they would shit in his underwear. So then when Dr. King would put his underwear on. <laughs> you think he did it? There was, sh- there was shit in him. <laughs> There was already shit in him. By God, someone shitted yeah. it in my underwear. I have a dream. <laughs> One day. And that's what they would do to him. They would get him good. Dr. King was under duress for so many years prior to his actual assassination. Whether it be a normal woman off the street, the KKK, or our own government, there was a constant effort to kill or discredit Martin Luther King's cause. The day that uh, King Jr. was killed, he was booked into room 306, which they called the King Abernathy Suite there at the hotel. And they called it that because he stayed there so often that they, had, they gave it a name that was, his, that was their – he had an entourage that followed along with him. And th- that's where they would stay. And Jesse Jackson was actually the – I guess he's in the, he's in the media a lot now. Mm-hmm. But Jesse Jackson was there that day that he got shot. And when Dr. King – fell and essentially died jesse jackson came forward i don't and a lot of people don't like jesse jackson i don't know anything about the guy to say whether i fucking like him or don't like him yeah but i i hear this story and i'm like i'm a piece of shit within a few hours jesse jackson was telling everybody he held dr dr king's head as he died 
And everybody that was there that day came forward and said, you weren't ever fucking close to Dr. Nah, King. yeah, fuck people like that. And then he came back and said, clout chasers, that's what they call He said, called. well, I reached out for him. I wanted to hold him, but I couldn't get my hands to him. So it went from I held his head in my hands while he died to I reached for him. Next time my wife says, hey, motherfucker, I told you to do the dishes. I'm going to say, I reached for the dishes. <laughs> Should have been good enough, right? She's going to say, no, you fat bastard. It's like that one story where I think it was uh, Anderson Cooper where he said he was like shot down in a helicopter. Mm-hmm. <laughs> nope, he wasn't. Yeah, we landed under sniper fire. Yeah, they weren't even under fire at all or Who something. Who the fuck are you? Yeah, like why lie about this shit, man? I legit shit my pants the other night. <laughs> I don't have to make that story up. Yeah. We can call my wife down here and she'll tell you about the underwear in the trunk and how upset she was. <laughs> she called me a nasty bastard. Is that exactly what she said? If she pops her head in here one time, then I'm going to ask her. Yeah. And tell I, us about the underwear. And the fact that she hit me with bastard was because that is a really underutilized curse. It really is. Yeah. You say you bastard. She said you nasty bastard. I said, hold on. He's your dad, too. <laughs> your father-in-law. At 6.01 p.m. that night, James Earl Ray fired a single .30-06 bullet from a Remington Model 760 rifle from across the street at a boarding house across the street from the Lorraine, uh, Lorraine Motel. Shortly after the shot was fired, witnesses observed a man fleeing from a rooming house across the street from the Lorraine Motel which presumably was James Earl Ray, or it wasn't, depending upon who you ask. James Earl Ray had been renting a room at the boarding house across the street, and they, the police found a dump package close to the site that included a rifle and binoculars, both with uh, James Earl Ray's fingerprints on the murder weapon and the binoculars. James Earl Ray was located two months later uh. at a London... Heathrow Airport. Now, if this story doesn't stink like fish after what I just told you right there, then I don't know what does. James Earl Ray wasn't your run- everyday run-of-the-mill dude. He was an escaped convict from the Missouri State Prison. I think he was in there for burglary or theft, but he was not a hardcore fucking Navy SEAL. He had nothing going on that would lead you to believe that he was an expert marksman that could shoot somebody from 70 yards across the street. This dude did not have it going on. He did not. Uh, he wasn't. Yeah, very similar to Lee Harvey Oswald. I don't know. He's <laughs> not a very tactical person, if you know what I mean. <laughs> so you have an escaped convict. And the one thing, if you've ever escaped from prison, please send us an email. Oh, yes, Ohio podcast At gmail.com. When you have reached the end of your prison stay, they normally give you like 60 bucks and take you to a bus station today back then i would imagine they probably give you about five dollars and tell you to fuck off when they Pre- put yeah, you up the front door pretty much he escaped from prison so in him escaping from prison all of he all that he presumably had was probably the clothes on his back and the fucking toenails on his feet that's all he had mm-hmm. but somehow by the grace of god a fucking gun that he bought himself with hmm. a different alias, hmm. didn't steal the gun. He bought it under a different name, uh, a, a Remington Model 760. He used that to perform the murder, and if that didn't use all of his money, he was able to stay on the run for two months. It's huh. not about it's not about just disappearing for two months. It's about surviving two months on your own with no money, or did he have money? But nonetheless, they didn't find him down in. Houston Airport. They didn't find him up at Niagara Falls. Hell, they didn't find him at Mount Rushmore. They found him at Heathrow Airport in London, England. He was an over the pond in an entirely, entirely different goddamn country. So for someone to say to me, the guy that killed Martin Luther King was an escaped convict with no money, but they found him two months later at an airport in London. That doesn't sit well with me. Yeah, not at all. I don't believe that. That's a long time, and how in the world did he get that far with no money? And how do they leave out this nugget, these nuggets of information when they're telling you this story Mm -hmm. from the history books growing up? They don't, I 
I remember James Earl Ray. He yeah. was the man that shot Mark. But does it ever dawn on me that, hey, yeah, he did shoot him, but then he was able to survive for two additional months. Somehow he even got the got the England. He got he, to London, right. He got to Europe. Is that where it is? Yeah. Sure. Crazy. Okay. He got all the way there, and he didn't even, uh, he was just an escaped convict. He was on the run. On the lamb. Two months he made it. Good for him. I, I, I don't think, I think somebody did it for him. March of 1968, almost a year later, after he was arrested, he confessed to the murder of Dr. Martin Luther King. That was only after his attorney said, listen, confess to the murder, you're not going to get the electric chair. Because James Earl Ray was terrified of being electrocuted. He was terrified of going to the electric chair. So he said, okay, okay, I killed him, I, I acted alone. They accepted the guilty plea, and at that moment... Going forward, they never let him change his plea after that ever again, and he remained in prison till 1998, I believe. Oh, my gosh. Stayed in prison for a long fucking time. And um, three days after he confessed to the murder, he recanted his plea, and he wanted to say that he was not guilty because dun, 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 he said that there were some people that aided him in the assassina assassination of Dr. Dr. King. He, uh, and we stated it before, he entered the guilty plea on the advice of his attorney. He was trying to avoid being electrocuted. I plugged in a hot glue gun when I was about six years old. Blew me across the fucking living room. <laughs> my nuts fell out of my boxers. My dad said, hey, your nuts are falling. Your nuts are out. I said, okay. A fucking hot glue gun just fucked me up. He said, get up. Your nuts are hanging out. Didn't have big balls yet. Still don't have the biggest of balls. He had a big dick hole, though. So, huge dick hole. <laughs> Some guys sit down and their balls fall in the toilet water. Yeah, man. What are we doing about that? I don't know. We got to get those guys help. We yeah. got to get them a little rotary thing they can turn. Oh, that's cool. The raise and lower <laughs> the balls. <laughs> like a fishing reel. Hot summer day. Lower my balls. <laughs> Cold day. Raise the balls. <laughs> Either way you want it. You can yeah. have it. You can have whatever you like. <laughs> yeah, I want your body. Needs your body. If I don't suck dick, then you don't need no body. I can't remember the words. So sometimes they make up my own words. This is so stupid. It is. <laughs> but this is where the conspiracy starts, in my opinion. Okay. He tries to avoid the the death sentence. James Earl Ray claimed that there was a man in Montreal named Raoul that was name. deeply involved with the planning of the assassination. Okay. And after all this went down, went down, Dr. Martin Luther King's son sat down with James Earl Ray. And after Dr. King's son came out of the, the sit down with James Earl Ray, he mm -hmm. said, this fucking man did not kill my father. That's how sure he was. Wow. That, how, that's a powerful statement. The son of the man murdered in cold blood said, the guy that you arrested, that you found his fingerprints on the murder weapon, you found his fingerprints on the binoculars used to watch my father that day, is not the man that killed my father. That's a powerful statement. Very powerful. And uh, James Earl Ray was adamant that he likely aided in the plan to kill Dr. King but in fact, he was not. He was certainly not the one that pulled the trigger. So James Earl Ray said, I probably had a hand in helping him. Helping the murder. But I was not the dude that pulled the trigger that killed him. And that's a safe assumption to say. That's a tough shot. There's lots of different variables about the crime scene that day. They said there was a tree branch hanging down that would have made it physically impossible for anyone to pull off that shot to kill Dr. King hmm. from that boarding room window. Whether that's true or not, you know, I don't know. I wasn't there that day. But that's what they, that's what they say. Another, uh, another discrepancy, uh, when the broadcast journalist Walter Cronkite broke the news of Martin Luther King's death uh, on American public television... He reported that, quote, police have issued an all points bulletin for a well-dressed young man, a young white man seen running from the scene. But then the investigation turned to James Earl Ray, a destitute middle aged fugitive from Missouri State Penitentiary, where he'd been serving a 20 year sentence for robbery. Hmm. 
Definitely a change. That was not a well-dressed man. That was a fucking dirt ball. Yeah. That James Earl Ray was. Right. Now, um, another kind of fishy spot here. FBI investigators traced the shot to a boarding house across the street from King's Hotel and discovered uh, what appeared to be a murder kit. Rifle, binoculars, and newspaper clippings about King's stay in Memphis. Uh, all this was wrapped in a green blanket. Fingerprint evidence pointed to James Earl Ray, and the rifle was traced to one of Ray's known aliases. Ray was captured by authorities at London's Heathrow Airport as he was on his way to Brussels and eventually Rhodesia, a place he wanted to immigrate to, according to the book Hellhound, on the trail by uh, Hampton Sides. This led to more doubt. How could this petty criminal, who was known for bungling even minor crimes, you got to think about that too, Mm -hmm. the fucking shit he was pulling off, penny crimes, buddy, nothing. How is he capable of hatching this intricate escape plan on his own? That's what I said before. He was gone for two months. Yeah. And no one knew where he was at. He was picked up in London. There was no way that he did that by himself. Ray claimed that Raul, the guy we mentioned from Montreal, was a gun runner with the mafia, with mafia connections. He was instructed by James Earl Ray to purchase the rifle, secure a room across the street from King's Hotel, and then go to a three-hour movie, leaving the rifle behind in the room. So that... I guess, bears uh, uh, some resemblance to the story that James Earl Ray was trying to portray. He said, look, I probably had a hand, in the, and he did not deny that. He said, I might have had a hand in the murder. There's no there's no denying that, but I'm not the one that pulled the trigger for, for him to say, look, there was this guy that said, set it all up, and then go watch a fucking movie through for three hours. Okay, <laughs> that, that actually sets, it doesn't sit well, but it makes sense. It was during this three-hour window uh, King was shot. Federal investigators have concluded time and time again that Raul did not exist, yet at least one witness was willing to testify, um, guess what, they never let him testify, that he'd seen uh, James Earl Ray with the man described as Raul. Never got to, uh, this guy never got to give his testimony. The authorities never matched the bullet (laughs) Hmm. that King... The, the, they never matched the bullet that, ki- that killed Martin Luther King to the rifle they, cl- they claim that huh. James Earl Ray used. Fishy. The forensic evidence uh, does not suggest otherwise, but they could never, the, the ballistics testing, they were never able to match the bullet used to kill King with the gun that was used in the, in the boarding room window. There's a plot hole. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Uh, Charles Stevens, the state's only eyewitness who claimed to have seen James Earl Ray leave the rooming house soon after the shot was too drunk to even stand up at the time. There was a tree branch between the bathroom window and the balcony that made a clear shot completely impossible. James Earl Ray was not a trained marksman and the scope on the rifle was not sighted, which means that it could not have hit a target. Six witnesses claimed that the shot came from bushes behind the rooming house Jim's grill was located under the rooming house and his back door opened onto the bushes. Ray was jailed, not due to evidence, but because he pleaded guilty because there was no evidence, they say, that was good enough to say that he was the one that committed the murder. You have a fucking bullet. The bullet doesn't match the goddamn gun, but the gun has fingerprints on it. He recanted his story three days later and spent the rest of his life trying to get a trial. Under Tennessee law, James Earl Ray had the right to a trial, but this was consistently denied. James Earl Ray claimed that his guilty plea was coerced by Percy Foreman, his lawyer at the time, who threatened him with the death penalty. And if this is not connecting in your brain right now, let me help you. This man pled guilty and then said, ah, no, 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 I, I, I have a story to tell here. They said, too fucking bad, you dumbass. You pled, you pled guilty. This guy never stood trial for the death of Martin Luther King. They said that, nope. He said, you're guilty, you're guilty, you're going away forever. The guy got 99 years imprisonment. He obviously died in prison. But he never got his day in court. He spent his entire life trying to over... And you know what? He probably... And I'm one of those guys that I I tend to believe the narrative sometimes. The narrative is that he killed Dr. King, which... (laughs) Who knows? Look at the evidence here. It doesn't sound like he did. Um... For me, it's hard to say 100%. 
But this is this just keeps getting juicier and juicier. Okay. Oh yeah. We mentioned that James Earl Ray said there were some ties between Raul and the mafia. There's a lot of people that claim the mafia was working with J. Edgar Hoover. J. Edgar Hoover hated Martin Luther King. Thought Martin Luther King was trying to side with the communists. Thought that Martin Luther King was trying to divide the country and bring down the U.S. government. J. Edgar Hoover fucking hated communists, <laughs> but he worked with the mafia, so would it make sense that somehow the mafia had a hand in the murder of Dr. Martin Luther King because J. Edgar Hoover's vehement hate of this man? Very possible. Sure. Now on to Dr. King's wife. Dr. King's wife, Coretta Scott, always suspected a conspiracy involving the FBI. So she thought that uh, th- what I just said was probably the the likely scenario. Georgia State University uh, history professor John McMillian told History.com that Mrs. King's suspicions did have merit. During the 1950s and 1960s, the FBI had not only placed Dr. King, his family, and his associates under constant surveillance, but had engaged in a campaign of harassment against Dr. King, which was revealed in an FBI memorandum. Mrs. King and the King children maintain that, at the very least, the FBI was not in a position to conduct an unbiased investigation, which I do believe that. Uh, J. Edgar Hoover was running the FBI at the time. There was always whispers of him being in bed with the FBI or with the uh, mafia, like I said. He had a debilitating fear that Martin Luther King was going to align with the communists, and he would stop him and the communists at whatever it took. The FBI campaign against King began with wiretaps, relentless, merciless wiretaps on Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. Everywhere he went, the FBI had his room bugged, his phones bugged. They were looking for anything that they could get to discredit this man. That's why it makes the second half of this episode a little touch and go, okay? I know some of this stuff's not going to sit well with some people because we're trying to paint a dark picture of of a man that had such a, a monumental effect on humanity. So I apologize for that. Nonetheless, the FBI, uh, their campaign against Martin Luther King began with wiretaps, but quickly ballooned from there. When wiretaps revealed that King was having extramarital affairs, the FBI shifted their focus to uncover all evidence of Dr. King's infidelity by bugging and tapping him in his hotel rooms and by paying informants to spy on him. So what they were trying to find was a, uh, uh, they wanted to see if there was a relationship between Dr. King and the communists. They started to bug Dr. King's room, tap his phone. So Dr. King knew, okay, they probably got my phone tapped. But little did he know that he had, they had the, the lamps and the curtains bugged in his room as well so they could hear everything that was going on in his hotel room that wasn't on a telephone as well. That's wild. What they did find out was Dr. King was, uh, it's alleged, he uh, dabbled in infidelity a lot. I think if you go back and look at it yourself, you will see that for all the good that Dr. King did, he liked him some pussy when he he would <laughs> he go was a get poon hound. Yes, he was. And Mrs. King was had some extra mar- marital affairs as well. So maybe that was their thing. Yeah, maybe that maybe there was an, uh, an open agreement. relationship. You never know, dude. The FBI uh, um, eventually the FBI penned and sent King an anonymous letter. So the FBI wrote a letter to Dr. King. They sent him the tapes of him having these extramarital affairs, and they suggested, they say, you know what? You should probably kill yourself. Oh, wow. Because we've got these audio tapes of you with these women, these wild women, these wild women. <laughs> we got you on here fucking these bitches, eating their butts, all this, being uh, doing the McNasty. And they wrote this letter, the FBI, to our Federal Bureau of Investigations, wrote a letter to the greatest civil rights leader of all time, in some people's opinion, the greatest Mm -hmm. subjective, and said, you know what? Give up, motherfucker. Kill yourself, because we've got you against the wall. We've got you cheating on your wife. 
We're going to give this to the media. They're going to tear you to shreds. You're going to be you're going to be disgusting. No one's going to look at you the same. You're going to go away. Dr. King didn't kill himself. Fortunately, thankfully. Um, they would go into these hotel rooms before Dr. King, and, as a, and he would always travel with his entourage of other pastors and other people on his team, and they would uh, be let in by the management of the hotels to bug these rooms and to have the rooms next door nearby. Um, they could listen. So they would be in the rooms next door, and they would actually listen to what was going on in the room as well. And they could hear what was going on when Dr. King and his associates took these rooms. So this was an all-out assault and as Chuck Knox says, a former FBI agent, anytime Dr. King was going to go to a new city, the agenda was FBI agents were on the move to get those places, to get to those places, to start to monitor and wiretap and listen to everything that was happening within the confines of those rooms between Dr. King and his associates, members of the Southern Christian Leadership Conference. The hope was then to pass it on to the press, this by them saying ga- the FBI gathering all these audio tapes and gathering all this information, their plan was, okay, so he's not going to kill himself like we wanted to do. They were going to give it to the media, and this would discredit Dr. King and his reputation as the upright Christian minister who's leading the civil rights movement. So people would say, oh, how horrible his personal life is. How can we follow this man? Which makes sense, I guess. Now what he didn't bank on was back in J. Edgar Hoover is who they're talking about. Um, What J. Edgar Hoover did not bank on was back in the 1960s. The press did not take the bait. They did not reveal the personal lives of these public figures. They didn't do it with John Kennedy. They didn't do it with others. And they did not do it with Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. So at this point, J. Edgar Hoover swinging and missing on Dr. King. Oh, yeah. Big swing. In 1979, years after his death, the largest government investigation in Dr. King's murder, which was led by the House of Representatives Select Committee on Assassination, who also took care of JFK's investigation, (laughs) theorized that Ray, uh, James Earl Ray, committed the killing in the hopes of collecting a a $50,000 bounty offered by the, the KKK, essentially. The committee was unable to prove this theory, but did conclude that King's murder was likely the result of a conspiracy. Hmm. The same committee investigated the assassination of John F. Kennedy. They fucking blew that to smithereens. <laughs> Listen to this next part. Okay. In 1993, a former Memphis restauranteur by the name of Lloyd Jowers came forward to say that the mafia had paid him $100,000 to plan King's assassination and that the trigger was pulled by a man named Frank Holt. As a result, James Earl Ray, who was ailing in prison at the time, pushed for the case to be reopened and an investigation ensued. But it went nowhere. According to John Campbell, one of the prosecutors involved in this investigation, Campbell admits that uh, James Earl Ray or whoever pulled the trigger could have uh, could had uh, helped plan the entire thing. Now we get to the civil case of Lloyd Jowers, which is the most astounding part of all of this. <laughs> in 1999, the King family sued Lloyd Jowers because, you know, he said, I fucking planned all this Uh for $100,000. They sued Lloyd Jowers for Dr. King's wrongful death, and they won the suit. Oh, shit. A Shelby County jury unanimously found that Jowers and unnamed, quote, others including governmental agencies, Hmm. unquote, end quote, were responsible for King's death. The judgment was only a symbolic win for the King family. However, because a civil suit cannot reverse a conviction, the King family had only sought one hundred dollars in damages, and this was strictly done to prove uh, to prove they were not motivated by financial. Wow! Pain. Wow! This and this, That's awesome. Uh, the, 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 this jury, six white people, six black people, they ruled unanimously that this was not what it was portrayed in the media and the history books that this was carried out by governmental agencies and other uh, unsavory characters. There you see. So you're telling me that an ungoverned body of, of agents that work through the FBI who have no checks or balances (laughs) would do something like this. Yeah, man, it's heavy, isn't it? Fuck dude. Yeah. And that day, anywhere Dr. King 
went, he was kind of given executive style protection from the local police departments. They always traveled with him because in the end of the day, it is the job of the police to protect and serve. Mm -hmm. And that's what they would, um, they were trying to do if Dr. King was to protect and serve him. They would follow him around like security guards. That day, for some unfucking godly known reason, the police security detail that was normally associated with Dr. King was completely withdrawn. He was hmm. out in the wild without protection. So they probably the they, police. they probably got orders from higher oh, up. They got their fucking pockets greased big time, yeah. buddy, on that one. I mean, it's like they they <laughs> they straight up throw it out and like say, hey, hey, you need to kill yourself now. And he's like, nope, I'm not doing it. Nope. So they're like, well, you know what? We'll kill yourself for you. We got you. <laughs> in 2007, retired Memphis police sergeant Jerry Williams revealed in an interview with uh, Democracy Now that on the day. Dr. King was assassinated. The usual security team that would have included Williams himself, it was not deployed. This has led to speculation that local law enforcement had been involved in or at least aware of a conspiracy to commit murder against Dr. Martin Luther King, Hmm. which leads us to the Uh, opening of of the the recent FBI files. And if you think it's related to his murder, if you think it's related to the government killing this dude, if you think it's related to any of that, you're completely dead wrong. It's about this man, Martin Luther King, getting his dick wet. Yeah. Huh. And like I said... Shit, this is recent. This is three, four years ago this shit was opened. Oh, this is recently. Yeah, 2017, There's 18. It. There's more to it coming, too, that we, nice. don't, we don't have yet. Okay. And this stuff is astounding. It's, uh, like I said, part of a dozier or a dossier. So was this found to be formal and official? No. These are just the... The investigation from this is a product of the wiretapping yeah. and the telephone tapping and so the microphones. Is, this is just the grounds for their smear campaign. Everything they recorded from these microphones, this is what they wrote down in this investigation. So take it with a grain of salt, but this is what is alleged. This can all be solidified. This can all go away. This entire everything we're about to read you can it can either be ya. Yeah, or nah, in about 10 fucking years. Well, less than that. Mm -hmm. And I'll tell you why in just a minute. Okay. In 2017 and 2018, the FBI declassified some documents in the JFK files in the National Archives. Former president of the United States that was assassinated by John Wilkes Booth in (laughs) Ford's three. Yeah, okay. Hidden deep in the JFK documents, according to Pulitzer Prize biographer David (laughs) Garrow, David Gayero, are the files that allege the sexual misconduct of Dr. Martin Luther King. There's a reason that if these are real, the world doesn't want to read them because Mm -hmm. he's a hero. We have cancel culture. If this came out as true, it would completely negate everything that he'd accomplished in his entire life in the eyes of a lot of people. Sure, yeah. It wouldn't physically take away what he'd accomplished, but people would say he needs to be erased from our history. I think that's what they would say. But I'm going to read to you what the FBI had in their investigative files. I will let you decide for yourself because some of it is quite profound. As we spoke before, the FBI was wiretapping anything and everything even remotely close to Martin Luther King. They were in the room next door. They had microphones in his room. They had his phone tap. There was nothing that he was saying, doing, watching that was not being watched by the FBI. I think that there was probably an assumption on the phones on Dr. King. He probably said, these motherfuckers got the phone tapped. I ain't fucked with that phone. But they had the curtains tapped. They had the walls tapped. They had everything. There was nothing that he could do or say without them catching it. Everything was bugged. This was all done to prove Martin Luther King's connection to the Communist Party, which they eventually said, okay, this motherfucker's not a communist. He just likes pussy. (laughs) What they did discover during these secret recordings was Martin Luther King had a less than savory relationship (coughs) with prostitutes and hookers. Okay. It is suspected that Dr. King's sexual abuse involved 40 to 50 different women, all of them being black. The written records only have been released. Like I said, all of this that we're reading you can go either way. Mm Mm-hmm. We can say, oh, man, they just fucking made that shit up. But in the year 2027, the audio files of all of these recordings will be released. Okay. And on that day, if we're still alive, we're still doing this, motherfucker. Hopefully we are. Yeah, it's only six years, man. (laughs) We're halfway there. (laughs) Talking like that. 
in 2027, the audio files of the audio recordings in question will be released, okay. and we'll be able to hear the world will, will be able to hear those. Exciting, and then we'll be able to give our take on what actually we think about this. Okay. In uh, Garo's research, he states that in one instance in January of 1964, Martin Luther King and his friends went to visit some church parishioners from the church of Logan Curse. Um, Logan Curse was a fellow pastor. This uh, event occurred in a bugged hotel room in Washington. Quote, the group met in Curse's room and discussed which women among the parishioners would be suitable for natural or unnatural sex acts. <laughs> okay. Well, no, yeah, you know I'd be sucking on them titties like them <laughs> on set on natural sex acts. Natural or unnatural Put sex Put them acts. big old titty boobs in my mouth. <laughs> when, what, what's an unnatural? What? I know, what are they referring to? He shitted on her. Unnatural. I do some unnatural sex stuff. I've gr- I grunt like a fucking grizzly bear sometimes. <laughs> and my wife will look me straight in the eye. She'll say, fucking caveman. That was unnatural. And I say, yeah. <laughs> That's unnatural. <laughs> Hold on for the next 30 seconds. When one of the women protested that she did not approve of the acts that were being taken out on her, the Baptist minister immediately and forcibly raped her. Oh. This is the typed summary from the government documents. And sometimes I will say, guys, I read this article and the guy said these are government documents. But I've fucking read the government documents myself. It's on a .gov website of these un uh, these unclassified JFK files. I'll include the link in the description. This shit was everything I'm saying right now was recorded by the FBI in a dossier. There's a file where they record all this stuff. These are official, unclassified, declassified FBI files that were given to the world. And no one read them. No one wants to read them, but uh, I fucking read them, so mm-hmm. here we are. Um, the Baptist minister immediately and forcibly raped her, the type s- the summary states, uh, parenthetically citing a specific FBI document, which I will link as its source. It also said the FBI document says Dr. King looked on, laughed, and offered advice to uh, a curse, the fellow pastor who was raping the young woman. Mm. At the Willard Hotel, Dr. King and his friends' activities resume the following, the very next evening, and approximately 12 women, 12 individuals participated in a sex orgy, he writes, quoting the FBI material. FBI agents described what they witnessed as acts of degeneracy and depravity. That's strictly opinion uh, of the FBI officials on Mm -hmm. the case, but... Uh, when one of the women shied away from engaging in an unnatural sex act, Dr. King and several of the men discussed how she was p- to be taught and initiated in this respect. Dr. King told her that to perform such an act would, quote, help your soul, states the FBI document. So he said, I know what's going to make you feel better. <laughs> I know what you need. And it's fucking sick the joke about this if it really happened. But here's the, here's the, uh, the part that causes so much confliction for me you think about everything that the man did Mm -hmm. and everything that he stood for but to think about the deeds that were done in the dark at night that nobody and what johnny cash fucking says man what's done in the dark will be brought to the light and this shit right here if it is true what he was doing to these women fuck him for this shit yeah cool the other stuff you did man thanks for the progress you helped in the community thank you for everything but in terms of what you did to these women Go fuck yourself, man. I don't know if he deserved to die for it. That's not. I'm not the fucking maker. I'm not the creator. I'm not the great decider. I'm not any of those things. But this is some bad shit. Oh, for sure. And it gets worse. Um, King announced that he prefer. <laughs> this is my favorite part of the story, man. Okay, here we go. Uh, I don't want to let you read it yet because it's so fun. Okay. <laughs> and he, and we said earlier in the story there was a lot of people that believed Dr. King. He was DTF. He yeah. was always ready to get that poonhound. Long dick. Long, strong dick, and always ready to pick the pussy up and put it to sleep. There was a lot of belief that he was very much a sexually active man, and that was his, his shtick. Not always with his wife. And in the FBI documents, quote, the document said, Dr. King announced that he preferred to perform unnatural acts on women and by unnatural acts, they mean he loved 
to talk about eating pussy. <laughs> That's unnatural. He said, listen here, boys. Ah. <laughs> and if that's unnatural, call me the unnatural. <laughs> you got to read what it says, though. <laughs> oh, I am. Okay. <laughs> I am, because. <laughs> oh, shit. Breakfast, lunch, and dinner, I'll go down there if I have to. <laughs> Doesn't matter. Dr. King, the same way. Leftovers. King announced that he preferred to perform unnatural acts on women and that he had started, quote, this is a club that he called, he said, the International Association for the Advancement of Pussy Eaters. <laughs> If the man was just eating pussy. Yeah, and that's unnatural, I guess. If all he did was preach racial equality and then go to all these different cities and say, let me eat your pussy. <laughs> good man. Good, solid morals. Good for him. Way to go get it. Probably got us some, just the way statistically it works out, probably in the time, not nah, air conditioning, Statistically, he probably ate a lot of stinky pussy. So good for him <laughs> for soldiering through. But he said, my boys, I'm starting a club. I'm going to call it the International Association for the Advancement of Pussy Eaters. The IAAPA. -A -A <laughs> I'm going to eat all the motherfucking pussy. <laughs> so, Dr. King, I hope that you got all the pussy that you could possibly get. But I do hope that he wasn't womanizing these women like yes. the FBI portrays. Yes. Garo uh, quotes one FBI agent who interviewed 28-year-old white prostitute, mm. Gail LaRue. They just said it was only black prostitutes before. He said, I don't like to eat pussy for these white women. These white bitches got stinky-ass <laughs> pussy. I be eating these white pussies. Tastes like some old funky-ass lasagna. <laughs> I love lasagna. If you've ever ate pussy that tastes like old funky lasagna, send us an email for Podcast at gmail.com. No, we'll definitely get emails about that. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I can already hear. Bing, 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 bing. <laughs> uh, the pro the white prostitute Gail Larue was a mother to four children. Uh, she spoke about a violent sexual encounter that she and a friend had simultaneously with Dr. King. Damn. She told the FBI uh, that about May nineteen in a May nineteen sixty four interview, uh, it's quoted as saying, "Gail stated to the investigator that quote." That was the worst orgy I'd ever gone through, <laughs> adding that she had declined a subsequent subsequent request. Garo, now the guy that wrote the investigative piece, so a lot of this research came from the article written by Garo. Let me tell you something. I didn't need to go there because all of these are in this FBI document. I just didn't have time to read the entire 268-page report. Yes, 268 pages. That's a lot. Um, but this guy that, that that did dig in this all these documents and prepared the story, he had to to release his story uh, in Britain's Standpoint magazine. They were the only ones that would take a story, and even right now the story is no longer uh, you can't read it on their website because the New York Times turned him down, the Washington Post turned him down, the Atlantic turned him down, L.A. Times and the Guardian. All refused to Dang. publish his story, all because it didn't fit the fucking narrative of what they wanted the world to believe about Dr. King. Whether it was true or not, there's ways to cite that. You can say this is what come from a FBI dossier at a time when the FBI was obviously working on a smear campaign against oh, Dr. Yeah. Martin Luther King. Yeah, big time. So whether it was right. Whether it was wrong, we don't know. But the government could probably squash all of this. They just say, here's the fucking tapes. Listen to these tapes. And they hit play on the tapes. And Dr. All you hear is Dr. King eating pussy. Like, oh, gentlemen, welcome to my new club I just started. We're going to be eating pussy. <laughs> Here, present. <laughs> Sometimes I'll go. I'll start eating it, and I'll drop it low. I'll fucking lick the butthole sometimes. I don't even care. <laughs> don't I, Rob? Yeah, it's called a buffet. <laughs> it's called a buffet. That's the buffet. We call that shooting the moon in my house. <laughs> <laughs> oh, man. The investigative files were all part of this dossier, and they it's the Guardian says that they can be unsubstantiated. I don't see how that's possible to do, but according to the Times, it's someone's word against somebody else's word. Uh, according to the, I think this is the New York Times, I can't remember. Uh, the memo says Dr. King called a friend and said, uh, quote, this is on the recordings, Dr. King said to his friend, 
get your damn ass down here because I have a beautiful white broad here. <laughs> God. The FBI memo is said to have recorded the prostitute saying that King and the two women had sex, and when King's friend showed up, King, quote, watched the action from a close-by position, and they had, they too had sex. The memo quotes the prostitute saying she was getting scared as they were pretty drunk and using filthy language. I don't know what filthy language would have been at the time. So the National Pussy Eaters Alliance of the North American. She told an FBI interviewer that it was the worst orgy I'd ever gone through. <laughs> Me too, baby girl. Been there. And that shuts the door on the information we have related to Dr. King's Man. infinite travels with prostitutes and eating pussy and <laughs> allegedly victimizing for unnaturally the eating pussy unnatural sex acts <laughs> did they just start eating pussy in the past 40 years man or? they must have if that's considered unnatural they probably like the group of people that think that um only it's, it's unnecessary to for the women to feel pleasure because for <laughs> procreation the only thing that needs to happen is a man needs to ejaculate <laughs> <laughs> That's what I believe. <laughs> <laughs> I gotta get my nut. I gotta get my nut. <sighs> That's all that matters, man. Well, and I do. I want to say it again. Uh, I think Martin Luther King had a monumental effect on humanity. Yes, and civil rights. I yes, think he did a lot of beautiful, amazing, incredible things. But if this shit holds up, if this is true, if he was raping these women, calling people down to rape these women with him. Watching, instructing people how to rape these women. Got me a divine white broad down here. I got a good looking pog. Pog? <laughs> <laughs> Dude, I wish they used that term back then. <laughs> I got me one of them fat ass white girls. <laughs> she got a big old bush on her, though. <laughs> Smell like funky lasagna. That's what the first guy that ever ate la vagina said. Oh, man. And lasagna. That's I can't a, imagine. That's a big fucking bush. Yeah. It's a big bush. That's why. If your dad's over 40 years old, go give him a pat on the back. <laughs> he did the hard work. That guy had to soldier through some shit. <laughs> he had to deal with some stuff. Yeah, I think through evolution, women don't even get bushes now. Well, yeah, women didn't start shaving their pussies until cocaine came along. <laughs> Look it up. Yeah. Ask my mom. Let's call my mom. The sure. late 90s. Think my mom will answer? No. Uh, She's already in bed. Nonetheless. <laughs> yeah, it's 10 o'clock. So that's all the information I have about Dr. Martin Luther King and all the stuff that he did or didn't do. And also keep in mind, they were probably likely lying to us, lying to you and I about yes. who actually killed the man. Yes. About the plans, who concocted everything. They're definitely fucking lying to us. Yeah. Turn the freaking frogs gay. <laughs> They're doing all this bad shit. So that's why when they tell you to go get a shot and wear a mask, you don't believe them because they've been lying to us for 60, 70, 80 years. They don't have your good in mind, They're your goodwill in mind, or the, the well-being the of you, the yeah. wellness. All they got in mind is making money. <laughs> All Dr. King had in mind was racial equality and eating pussy. <laughs> and eating Pussy. What if and th and th that could have been lost in translation as well? These FBI guys are like, boss, you're doing some bad shit in there. And the boss is like, what's he doing? He's licking her vagina. <laughs> He's eating her pussy. We gotta put this in the report. We gotta write this down. What if Dr. King's the one that started it? <laughs> Maybe it all started because of him. <laughs> <laughs> boss. really went down dude i bet the, the first guy that tried to learn how to eat pussy was so confused <laughs> his dog probably wouldn't hold still for very long at all i know mine wouldn't when i was trying to teach myself oh shit god rest his soul <laughs> that dog didn't have a pussy no oh, man <laughs> i don't know what was under that tail <laughs> shit if you've ever eaten a dog's pussy, send us an email, <laughs> brohiopodcast at gmail.com. Also, we would like to thank the official sponsors of every episode of the Bro Podcast, Sticker Theories. Yeah. 
you can go to stickertheories.com, use the promo code all caps bro Ohio. You get 10% off your custom stickers. Stickers are here, stickers are there, stickers everywhere. Stickers for your stickers. You can stick stickers in your ass. I shit my pants last <laughs> week. Get get a sticker of a of a skid mark to stick into your underwear. She get a Be st- like Nick. Yep. Hmm. That's a little queef right there. <laughs> Tasty. I'm going to ask you this question. I know you got to run. You're pretty tired. You look like you're about to pass away. I know I'm we both fucking exhausted. I yet. know we both got COVID. Yeah, it's been a rough past couple days. How big do you think Dr. King's penis was? Monstrous. Monstrous. Yeah. I I, I don't want to go down this route, but there is a belief out there that black fellows have a lot huger wieners than white fellows. Okay. I worked in prison. Yes. I can assure you the black guys had much larger dicks than all of the white guys. <laughs> yes. Statistically, the calculations, my calculations, showed that, yes, the black peepees were a lot bigger. Yes. So all you pogs out there, keep that in mind. <laughs> I know I keep it in mind. If you're if you're scouting wiener size, that's where you want to go. Yes. It's just, it is what it is. Yeah. Do what you got to do. Uh, I mean... Don't come to my house though. I got <laughs> me a I got me a good ass broad. <laughs> Stay the fuck up out of here. Uh, there was something else. Uh, I don't remember what it was. Hmm. Big old fucking dicks though. I do remember that. <laughs> God, damn, big old fucking wieners. <laughs> Join us. Hopefully, Rob can get over here Wednesday night. Yes. Because that's the last night we can record for this month. Okay. Christmas push. Okay. <laughs> Battlefield Love, we got some wild ones, dude. Hell yeah. Some nasty, nasty shit. Good. Dr. King, God rest your soul. Thank you for everything you did. Thank you for everything you... I burped. FBI, once again, fuck you. Yeah, everything you stood for. <laughs> but, uh, man, if you were raping women, you need to come back from the dead. You need to apologize. Because all the cool stuff you did, we got to get some closure on this prostitute stuff. But I guess, you know, back when I was a prostitute... Construction workers used to spit on me and fuck me. It made it really awkward when we were all together the next day at the job site. Really awkward. Tends to do that. I pretended to be a prostitute. Oh, okay. Yeah. I wasn't really one. Just solicited everyone. I got some nice titties, though. Okay. Yeah. Push them together. Yeah. <laughs> Ain't nobody leaving here with a flaccid <laughs> dick. I know that. <laughs> you know this. All right. Well, join us on the uh, Battlefield of Love. If you have any advice or questions that you would like to be answered on the yeah. Ohio Battlefield of Love, send it over. S- send us an email. Subject line, Ohio Battlefield of Love. We'll read it on the air. We'll answer your questions. Solve all your problems. I don't know Which how one? many people have come to me and said, you fucking saved my life. Not, there hasn't been anyone <laughs> that said that. But I don't know how many of them have come to me and said, you know, you've saved our marriage. You brought so much light to a dark fucking spot in my life. I was going to fuck it. I was done jacking off forever. <laughs> we're having twin boys, and we're going to name them Nick and Rob now. Thank you so much. Twin girls, we're going to name them Nick and Rob. <laughs> Nikki and Roberta. We're having rabbits. <laughs> we're naming them Nick and Rob. I got crabs. I named one of them Nick and one of them Rob. <laughs> have any of you named an animal after us? That'd be pretty cool. That'd though. be pretty cool. Or one of the characters, yeah, like a Bill. Uh, there's like a Bill Wilkins, like a pissed off rat or somewhere. <laughs> well, I'm Bill Wilkins. I'm there with either here though, not on my shit. <laughs> there's a right. mule somewhere named so, Cemetery Terry. Yeah, <laughs> what you doing out here in the barnyard all by yourself <laughs> out here walking around? I see you be setting your booby traps out here. Oh. Just looking all fine. <laughs> Old farmer out here looking for something <laughs> like he got something he want to put up inside of me. You know, Cemetery Donkey Terry, he'd be running around <laughs> kicking the mule. They say, hey, boy, what you doing with them horseshoes on? You a donkey. I said, no, I'm a fat-ass mule. <laughs> I know what the fuck I'm doing with my feet. I'm out here setting booby traps. Farmer's wife came out here. I fuck her, too. You see the size of the dick on this mule? I got horseshoes, bitch. <laughs> I got horseshoes, bitch. <laughs> I'll be coming down the mountain when she comes. <laughs> oh, that's so stupid. <laughs> All right. We love you guys so love much. You. Okay, <laughs> YouTube. Bye, guys. I'm going to save this. Thanks, YouTube. Yep. Bye. Dr. King. Can't turn it off yet. No.